Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So if you do any client work or if you're looking to do client work, you'll probably have to end up creating animated icons you know, within your work. And it's very common, you know, for corporate sort of uh, graphics that you will have to create some sort of, you know, uh, infographics or some icons, you know, for whatever. And, you know, for this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and talk about creating any, um, you know, animated icon that you can uh, think of. So kind of here's our demo. We're going to go ahead and create like a camera icon. But you, you'll be able to create pretty much any icon that you need to create from this tutorial. So uh, what I like to do when I have to create icons, you know, one thing I like to do is go to like, you know, Graphic River or, you know, Google search some icons that have already been created and, you know, kind of take a look at their designs and see what, you know, I can incorporate into my own, you know, animated icon. Um, and basically, you know, that's how you can kind of create, you know, whatever icon you need to create just by looking at other people's work and then being able to animate it in After Effects. So if you don't know too much about shape layers in this tutorial, before we go into this tutorial, don't worry, you'll be a pro at shape layers. So let's go ahead and create a new composition and we'll call this one Tut. So if I'm, I'm going to go ahead and create a camera and, you know, I understand that, you know, I need to create the lens, the body, uh, you know, the reels for the film. So, you know, I'm just going to kind of take a, take these elements and recreate them in After Effects. So basically what we'll do is we'll go to our rounded rectangle tool and we'll kind of draw out a rectangle, you know, like this. And we'll go into the rectangle contents right here and we'll delete the fill because we don't need it. And we'll go right into the stroke properties and we'll increase the stroke width to about probably about 10 and then uh, we need to maybe change the color of this so we'll go to the black color here and maybe change it to white and now we have sort of our uh, base of our body you know if I want maybe I'll go to the selection tool over here and you know maybe stretch this out a little bit so we have a bigger body and if we want the rectangle to be a little bit more round we can go into the rectangle path and increase the roundness if we want by a little bit and that looks pretty cool. And then uh, what we need to do now is uh, with this add button here, go ahead and click on it and click on trim paths. And uh, basically we open the trim path properties and we can kind of play with the start. And as you see, we have a little bit of animation going through here. So uh, what I'll do is uh, set this to 100% to start to 100%. Click the uh, stopwatch for the keyframe to add a keyframe there. Move forward in time to maybe like, you know, two seconds and bring us down to 0%. So already we have the body animating, and if we don't want the you know animation to start right here, we can kind of go to the offset here and maybe say, hey, we want the animation to start, you know, maybe like right over here. So now the animation will start there, and that looks pretty cool. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create some more elements. So and my keyboard just died in the middle of the tutorial. All right, my keyboard is back. So let's go ahead and create the reels up here, and what we'll do is go to the ellipse tool, which is right here. And what we'll do is hold down uh, Alt and Shift on our keyboard, and we'll draw out a rounded circle just like this. And maybe we'll make it like that big. And then let's go ahead and reposition this to be over, you know, our uh, camera. Maybe I'll go ahead and scale down our camera just by a little bit. It's kind of too big for me. And then let's go here and put this here. Okay. And then of course let's go ahead and maybe uh, delete the fill and turn up the stroke to maybe. Uh, 10 or so and set it to white and cool so uh, now we, once again we got to go right into the trim paths and we'll kind of do the same exact thing uh, go ahead and set the start to like 100% add a keyframe maybe we'll add a keyframe around like you know one second or so like let's have a start at a second and then move forward in time to maybe like you know two over two seconds and then have the animation be complete so now we have this animation going for us. And then now that we have our, you know, our base of our circle here uh, completed, maybe I'll call this one uh, real. And then what we can do is maybe duplicate this layer and we can maybe scale it down. Like that or so. And then we'll go ahead and open up these properties, go into the contents, go into the ellipse, the stroke, and we'll go ahead and maybe make the, add, increase the stroke by a little bit. And then let's go ahead and go to add and click on repeater. And we go ahead and open up those properties and we need to add maybe four copies of this. And then we're going to the transform repeater properties, which is right down here. And uh, what we need to do is kind of uh, set the position to zero. And then we'll go ahead and set the rotation to 90. And then we'll go to the anchor point and change the X value all the way to the negative position until we can manipulate these 
to kind of have this perfect uh, you know, square shape like this. And then finally, we can go here, uh, move this, uh, these holes into our reel up here. And it's pretty cool. And then what we want to do is move this anchor point to the middle of our four circles here. And then finally, we can hit R on our keyboard for rotation and click the stopwatch and then maybe you know set the set that keyframe all the way to the beginning here to zero seconds or zero frames and then go to like maybe 10 seconds and then we'll go here to the first value here where it says zero x and maybe set it to like two x or let's do four x so now this will completely be rotating the entire time and it looks pretty cool so now we'll go ahead and select both of our uh, you know our circles here we'll duplicate them by hitting command d on our keyboard or control d on pc and we'll kind of move these over to the other side here. And maybe I'll move this over as well. You know, maybe we'll keep it there. And don't worry, we'll kind of go ahead and fix this up a little bit later, how our, you know, our camera body's kind of getting in the way. And I'll kind of go ahead and maybe increase the width of those real fast. So, so far looking good. We need to probably cut this out. So what I'll do is I'll pre-compose our camera body here, and I'll call it camera body. And then what we need to do is go to the pen tool and we need to move in here and kind of just like mask, you know, like around the reels here, kind of like this. And then when we get over here, we want to kind of keep this gap here. So we'll kind of go just kind of mask uh, around the reels like this and then basically close it up, hit M on our keyboard to bring up the mask property and set it to subtract. And as you can see now, the uh, reels are completely over the body. It looks pretty cool. So now we're going to create a few more elements. And uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll select the big circle here. I'll duplicate it. Maybe rename it to button. And we'll scale it down. Maybe I'll double click our uh, pan behind tool here. So we center the anchor point. And then maybe I'll move it over here. Maybe scale it a little bit more. And then go into these properties. Increase the stroke uh, width by a little bit. And I hit UU on our keyboard to reveal all the affected properties. Um, I recently made a uh, top 10 shortcuts video for After Effects. You can go ahead and click on that now if you want to watch that. Or you can watch it a little bit later. But uh, there's our button. And then now we can kind of go ahead and maybe create like the actual lens, which is a little bit more, um, I guess, challenging. So what we'll do is go to the pen tool here. We'll zoom in, move it over. And what we'll do is we'll kind of click a point on our camera body, hold down shift and click another point so we have a straight line. And then we'll kind of create the opening for our lens like that. And then we'll kind of go like right here and hold down shift. So now we kind of have created four points for like the half of our lens. And then we'll kind of, we'll go into our properties here, go into the contents, shape one, go ahead and open up. We'll delete the fill, go into the stroke and we'll go ahead and maybe set the stroke width to about 10. Actually, that's pretty good. And then we'll go ahead and set it to white. You know how it goes. And now we'll go into the path one here. And actually, we need to duplicate path one. So we have another one here. We'll hit V on our keyboard, open up path two, click the uh, path property here. And now we can kind of like drag this down like this. And what we need to do is hit Command T on our keyboard or Control T on a PC. And we need to just kind of flip this like this to our best ability. And then we can kind of move this over here. Kind of like match it up so you're like okay okay that looks pretty good and then we can kind of like go like that so now we kind of have our lens here and we can kind of move this up if we want hit on our keyboard and we can move it up so the trim paths will work exactly the same even though we have two paths in this one so this time what we'll do is we'll use the end um value instead so what we'll do is maybe go to like you know two seconds ish click the keyframe for end, make sure it's set to 0%, move forward in time by a little bit, and then we'll kind of go ahead and set that to 100% like that. So now, it'll come on from the, from the beginning, just like that from the camera body, and it looks pretty good, you know? And the one last thing we'll create is a line, which still has some good value for this tutorial. So what we'll do, go to the pen tool, and we'll click a straight line like this, hold down shift, so we can make a perfect straight line, and you know, go to the contents, shape, delete the fill, because we don't need it, go to the stroke, set it to like maybe seven or so, set it to white. And right now, as you can see, it's basically, it's not, it doesn't look beautiful. It's just like a straight, harsh line. So what we can do is go into the line cap and change it to round cap. And now it's kind of, it's going to kind of round out and looks pretty good. I like it. And then of course, 
trim pre- trim paths and you know we'll set this to 100 percent keyframe to start move forward set zero percent all right so now if we zoom out here we kind of have this full animation of everything and what we can do uh is ki- kind of select all of our layers hit u on our keyboard to bring up all the keyframes and select all the keyframes and hit F9 on our keyboard to make them easy as keyframes. Now, if you want to animate this out, what I would do is maybe just copy each row of keyframes and paste them. Just like this. And then we can maybe like offset some of these by a little bit. So, so we have a little bit of randomness and variation in our entire animation. And then what we need to do is select our last keyframes here. Uh, the ones that we just pasted, right click them, go to keyframe assistance, and click on time reverse keyframes. Then we need to go into the camera body, which we shouldn't forget about. Copy those keyframes, paste them, uh, you know, make the last ones, you know, time reverse keyframes, and then hit F9 for easy as keyframe. And after a quick tutorial, this is what we have, and it looks pretty good. So hopefully you guys, uh, you know, took away something from this video where you can create pretty much any animated icon that you can imagine. If you guys want a longer tutorial where I, you know, uh, animate uh, several icons, please let me know in the comments section down below. Or if you have any questions, uh, please hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And if you guys are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button for more tutorials just like this in After Effects. And if the video was helpful, please drop a like. It helps me out tremendously and lets me know that I'm doing a good job. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully I'll see you soon.